My name is Phyllis Jordan and I live in Fredericton. In 1958, the town of Newcastle gave Lord Beaverbrook the deed to the town square. It was to show appreciation for his many benefactions to the town. He was in town for the ceremony, which had planned the outside. However, it started to rain. And in the square, there was a large crowd of girl guides and brownies. They were so disappointed. So the girl guide leader came to me and asked if I could get word to Lord Beaverbrook. So I went to s town hall and was told Lord Beaverbrook was upstairs in the council room. So without a thought, I went upstairs and knocked on the council room door. So after telling my story to three gentlemen, the next person who opened the door was Lord Beaverbrook. And his first words to me were, what can I do for you, my dear? So I told him the story. Where are they? across the street in the square, your lordship. And with that, he took off down the hall toward the stairs with Bob Tweedy running behind, your coat, your coat, your lordship. And he didn't pause, he just kind of growled over his shoulder and he said, I don't need my coat. And he kept going. So he followed him downstairs and he started across the lobby toward the exit door. And about then I thought, what have I done? So I went to the RCMP constable on duty and I said, perhaps it would look nice if you escorted Lord Beaverbrook across to the square. And he was all dressed in his red serge, so it looked very good and away they went and everything went well. Later on there was entertainment in the auditorium. I was standing in the doorway looking on and Lord Beaverbrook was sitting in the front row with an aide on either side of him. He looked over and saw me, and he told one of the aides to get up and beckoned me to come over. So first of all, he thanked me profusely. He was so pleased that he knew about those children. He said he would have been so upset had he disappointed them. So after that, he looked at me and he said, are you married? I said, yes, your lordship, I'm married and I have three children. He said, good God, woman. <laughs> so he, we chatted a little bit about, uh, he wanted to know about the family and where I lived and what I did and so on. And so that basically was my visit with Lord Beaverbrook. What were your impressions of him? He was a dynamo, an absolute dynamo. His eyes were magnetic. He <laughs> looked right through you. He was so vital. And it was only six years later that he died. He was 79 then. But he was so full of life, sharp and interested and quick. Yeah, he was an amazing man. You couldn't help but be impressed. He, he, he just had so much vitality and his eyes were so piercing and he was sharp, a very, very sharp man. He did so much, he did. And he used to come to Newcastle every year. I was living there at the time. And he always went to the old man's library and Louise Manny, of course, I had a lot of contact with Louise. And uh, she was his right hand there in the library. And Louise used to say, when Lord Beaverbrook comes, it's tuk, 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 tuk. <laughs> Everything has to go wild, <laughs> boom, boom. He, she had to really be on her toes. He was a most remarkable man. I've read so many books that I've, I've learned about his career and his life. And he was just one in a million.